everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video in the series that I call Art for Fun. This is the third video I'm making in this series and as I've mentioned previously, these are one of my favorite videos to make, mostly because all I really hope to give you guys out of these videos is an excuse to sit down and play with all of your art supplies because that's really what this video is for me. I love making videos for you guys and I love the process of filming and editing and it's something that I really do enjoy but more than anything my favorite thing to do in my free time is to paint and most recently painting with watercolors has been like the best therapy ever. <laughs> for any of you who follow my art Instagram account, I've been really, really enjoying posting on there and showing you guys what I'm working on and just seeing what all of the other artists that I love to follow are up to as well. So anyways, I'm just starting off this video by doing a pencil outline. The inspiration for the painting that I'm doing today was a photo that I saw on Instagram of a hand-lettered piece that had these super exaggerated drop shadows, which I thought was really, really cool. I'm really into hand lettering. I go kind of back and forth between the different styles that I like to do, but I've really been loving playing around with enormous and excessive drop shadows because I think it's super like dramatic looking for no real reason and I just love it. And the other thing that I really have been loving is this beautiful blue watercolor. Both of the blues that I'm gonna be working with in this painting are just absolutely gorgeous. The paints that I'm using for this are actually by the brand Reeves. I really do like these paints. I think there's like a set of 10 that I got. I really, really enjoy these paints. I think they're really smooth to work with. I like the colors. The only beef that I really have with this particular set is it doesn't come with like a really solid red color. The red that it comes with has more of like a pinky magenta tint to it, which is really, really pretty, but um, I ended up having to buy another separate brand of red watercolor because I couldn't really mix the type of red that I would want to use, so. But today we are just working with these beautiful blues and greens. I didn't want to have to actually use any white paint in this painting, so to create the illusion of white letters, I actually penciled in all of the outlines for my letters. Then I penciled in the drop shadows behind that. I just freehanded all of the angles, so they are not perfect by any means, but I tried to get them as even as I could in depth and in angle. And luckily, because of like the variation in the watercolor, you can't really tell in the areas where I wasn't as consistent. Normally, I would go in with like a masking fluid or something like that in order to protect the areas that I didn't want to get paint on, but I gotta be honest, I was just feeling a little bit lazy uh, and I didn't necessarily wanna do that. So then after I finished filling in those giant drop shadows, I went in and painted the background color. This is a very interesting order to do these things. It doesn't necessarily make sense, but for the effect that I wanted to get, uh, it really made sense for me to do it this way, doing the background last. As you can tell, I was being a little bit fickle with trying to decide what exactly I wanted the color of this background to be. If you guys ever like start making something and you like have an image in your head of how you want it to look, but then you start to put it down and you realize, oh, that's not exactly what I thought it was going to look like. So that's kind of the situation I was running into with this where the colors just weren't kind of uh, working exactly the way that I wanted them to. So I kept reworking them until I was actually happy with the way it was looking. I just, I knew I absolutely wanted the background of this to be the most vibrant, beautiful blue color that I could find. So I kept on remixing my paints until I finally found that perfect bluey turquoise color. Hidden towards town. Seen a thousand suns, too many pretty sights have crossed my way. But you'll always be beautiful, a little boy, a little girl, playing love games in the middle of it all. A little kiss, a little touch, 
I didn't end up actually using true watercolor paper for this, which, you know, at first uh, I thought was going to be a huge mistake because I was worried that the water was going to start pilling my paper when I kept on reworking all these different areas. Luckily, that didn't really happen. But at first I was very unhappy with like the way that the paint was like interacting with my paper and the water. It just, it was kind of getting clumpy and I couldn't get it to smooth out and dry. And I couldn't figure out why until I realized that I was using the wrong type of paper. I didn't really realize how big of a difference paper really makes when you're working with watercolor. You will know when you're working with good watercolor paper, the paint will just work with you so nicely and you will just be such a happy person and everything will go great. But when you're not using the right paper, it can be really, really frustrating. On the other hand though, I was able to get this really cool kind of blotchy, almost like tie-dye texture with my colors, which would be kind of hard to achieve, I think, if I was actually using true watercolor paper. So a bit of a blessing and a curse there. I was really happy with the end result, but it did take me a while. It was very time consuming to go in and try to fix the texture of all these different areas, especially when I was getting close to my lettering and I'd use these little tiny paint brushes. But in the end, I was really, really happy with it and it all turned out okay. Lately, watercolor has been my favorite type of paint to work with. I don't know what you guys prefer, but I think watercolor is so fun just because when you're using good watercolors with good brushes, it's just such a therapeutic experience because I just love watching the way that the paint moves around with the water and the way it dries on the paper and how you can kind of layer it up and get different colors and different looks. It's just such a free flowing medium and I really, really love that. I wasn't super happy with the way my word good was standing out on the page. It kind of blended in to the background. So I used my, my handy dandy white gel pen to go around that, give it a little bit of a something to help it stand out. And then I also went on the right side of my lettering with that as well to just give it a little bit more on top of that enormous drop shadow that was already there. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. This is truly truly one of my favorite paintings I've ever made um, and just like any painting that I make I'll probably never be through going back in and working on it you kind of have to force yourself to step away at times because it can be really hard to let go just finish something and leave it be because I tend to be a little bit of a perfectionist with stuff like this I hope you're all having a wonderful day a wonderful week and I will see you guys again very soon in another video I don't know why those words always get me so tongue-twisted okay bye